Welcome to New Mexico Black Rifle Operators Union. I'm your host, Sean. So, I apologize for the audio being off on the last podcast. I'm still trying to get a tablet to work for podcasting a little better, trying to get a better microphone for it. The idea is I want to do some more interviews with some of my friends and some of my uh, cohorts that are into the 2A um, and have some conversations so that we can just, you know, talk about guns and see if we can get more people interested in New Mexico Black Rifle Operators Union just by community. And um, in doing that, there's a little testing that I've got to do. And rather than recut it, I've always strived. I'm sorry, I was searching for the word again. I don't know why the hell I'm having these problems lately. But I've been searching for a way, strive to like keep it as real as possible with you guys. So I don't edit my podcast on purpose because I want you to see that I'm human and that this isn't AI driven or that there's nothing different. This is just some guy, you know, ranting about guns and politics on New Mexico Black Rifle Operators Union. So if you've been in the blogosphere or if you've been on social media lately, there's been a video that's been making the rounds that I think is just hilarious and it needs to be talked about because who polices the police? Um, So if you hadn't heard, there was a cop that shot up his own police cruiser and then his partner, um, another cop, I won't say it was his partner, another cop starts shooting back um, into the same cruiser thinking that there's a shooting that happened. When What actually happened was there was an acorn that fell and hit the roof of the police car. And that was enough for the cop to think he was getting shot at. At least that's what they're saying. Now, if you look at it, it's scary to see how these cops act. Number one, uh, the cop that thinks he's being shot at, he does a combat roll forward. So I, or a couple of them actually. And I, I, I'm curious as to why you would do that if you think you're taking rounds. And he doesn't go towards cover. He goes actually towards the very open ground. Um, Usually when you get shot at, you know, just from personal experience or even in training, you seek cover. Um, If not cover, it's concealment. You're trying to hide if you're not going to try to stop bullets coming your way. And that's not what this cop did. He rolled forward, uh, like combat rolled. And then he continues to go about his business and he, like, in shooting, he empties two magazines, and he's trying to reach for his radio to say shots fired, but you don't really see that. The only reason why, or I I imagine it didn't key up, because he doesn't really make contact with his radio. At least it doesn't look like it to me. But this other cop was close enough to hear this, was an earshot, and she responds in kind. Now, she's shooting in the same direction, as uh, the cop that thinks he's under fire. And watching the whole thing, you're if you're anywhere in the gun space and you know what bullets do, you're wondering, one, there's a lot of houses in the background of this that they're shooting at. Two, there was a suspect in the car. And he luckily he didn't have any... Uh, injuries from this so I imagine the cop is thinking that you know I'm guessing here and there's another flip side to this I'll get to here in a little bit I'm guessing that he suspected the suspect had a gun somehow that he missed during the search before he cuffed him now having been kind of a critic of cops especially in Farmington you know you shoot up a man um scare his wife, and you kill him um, because you show up to the wrong house on a Wednesday late at night in a town that rolls up the sidewalks at 8 o'clock on a weekday. And you don't suspect some guy, you know, in the Southwest knowing response times to answer his door with a gun. Now I see a lot of people who are back the blue no matter who that are always uh, going, well, he shouldn't have shown up to the door with a gun. And in today's day and age, there's some merit to that. I mean, I would have checked my window at the very least, and I would have checked uh, 
you know, my camera's on the outside of my home because we live in that day and age. Um, so I guess there's some validity in saying that. I still think there's a big problem with uh, use of force with Farmington PD. And I think they need to get that under control. And I don't think it's going to happen with the current police chief. Um, he seems very much um, a statist. And he seems very much um, kind of do whatever just to keep his job. Anyway, back to the shooting. So you have two cops shooting at this police car- cruiser. Okay. Um, what happens if you know what bullets do? Bullets aren't going to stop in a car. They're going to continue to travel. So this violates every rule of gun safety, number one. Uh, Don't point a gun unless you know um, what you're going to do. You know, make sure it's destroying, going to get destroyed, or you don't care if it gets destroyed. Um, Know what's behind your target, (laughs) because they didn't know that either. And understand the stress that this person was perceived going through. He later resigns from the police department, and they find him at fault for it, but he doesn't go to jail for it. So it raises a very valid point, I think, in today's day and age of who's policing the policeman. You know, if they can do this type of thing, and I understand they're all human, and I'm not faulting them for that, but I am faulting them for using excessive gun force Because, let's think about this. This was a home, a residential area. Okay, so there's kids, there's families in this area. Whether it's poor or not, I I couldn't tell from the little clips of this video. But it raises that question of what would have happened if those rounds flew through one house, two houses, you know, a couple houses. And little Susie was playing in the front room and got hit. Now this is from a cop that's firing two magazines out of a pistol and then his uh, responding officer fires at least another mag out of her gun. So you've got say 40 or 50 rounds that are out of the have been discharged. Where did they all go? And it seems like by the grace of God no one was hit. By this incident. But it raises that question. Because it made me think about what happened in the incident in Farmington. You know the cops fired a lot of rounds. um, I think seven. Seven or eight. And the wife fired another dozen or so I think back. Until they realized that it was the cops. And (laughs) she realized it was the cops. And the cops realized no one had done anything wrong. Um, They both were responding to force in different ways. Now it raises that question of, are you legitimate in shooting at officers if they've shot at you? Um, I would say, (laughs) just try not to get in those situations to begin with. Um, If that person, the homeowner, was better trained, I think the incident would have been way less... uh, Prime for death. Um, however, if that had went another way and the police officers had made entry for some reason, um, and this guy, to, to his credit, he didn't know what was going on, how would he have responded? And I put myself in that situation. You know, someone's pounding on your door in the middle of the night and goes and kicks it in. I'm more likely to respond with force especially if I didn't hear them identify themselves because I'm woken up from sleep. And that puts us in a very, very bad situation for someone who's probably as capable as your average officer off the street, Um, considering that I've trained with a lot of the special response team guys to be better, (laughs) Um, and I've spent capital of my own money to train and learn to be more Um, capable with a firearm that puts two very colliding forces going in at at the same time and while I'm sure I wouldn't don my body armor, I do have it um, in such a quick snap of events but I can see myself throwing down 
very effective fire. And that could be bad for me in that it could kill me, but it also could be really bad for the law, f- law enforcement officers because, you know, if I am lucky or someone was lucky in that type of situation, you kill the cop. And I say lucky, you made rounds, you were effective with your gun. And that's something that you think about when you do this, is to be as effective as you can, because if you have to use a gun, you only want to use it once. You only want to take that one target out that you have to. You want to end whatever threat, however many threats there are. And it makes me think that with more and more people getting tactically trained, getting better at the skill law enforcement's behind the curve and I understand their jitteriness and I understand the economy and you get what you pay for but there's going to be more and more of this type of incident I believe and I think what we need to look at is de-escalation is what is law enforcement's idea of a win you know if you are in a situation and you kicked in the door Okay, and the homeowner reacts in kind um, because he doesn't know what's going on, he didn't hear the announcement, and he's not a criminal. You've got the wrong house. And he does fire back and he shoots and kills. You bet nowadays that he's going to go spend some time in jail. Or if a cop does that to a normal citizen, that's not the case. Why is that? So, you know, you think of all these higher law enforcement agencies like the FBI or the state PD or even the sheriff's office when you think of living in a city. And if the city guys do something wrong, the next person in the, what do you call it, jurisdiction, yeah, the next person that has jurisdiction takes over the investigation. A lot of times it's your sheriff's office or it's your state PD, okay? What are they going to find in favor of you? Or are they going to find in favor of the cop? And, you know, this is where we actually have to look at today's society and the culture. Is it all based on race? So if a black man, black homeowner, fires on cops and um, kills one on accident, is he does he get off because of his diversity points? Or, say, it was a a gay man that was firing, thinking his life is in danger, and he fires and kills a cop. Does he get off because of diversity points? But what happens to just the poor white guy, you know? Or are they all equally screwed because they shot at a cop, regardless of what the cop did? You know, for a long time, I was one of those back-to-blue people. And it just seems like more and more, um, the grade of cop has degraded. And we've ended up with what we see at the restaurants. We end up with not the greatest people working those jobs that need to be worked. And in that line of work, where it's such high stress and such high pressure to perform and to do your due diligence and to be correct with what training they have, you know, we get what we pay for. If we don't pay for better services, we don't get them. At the same time, we have to look at our government itself and see what they're putting their funds in. You know, right now we're seeing really, really blue counties and really, really blue states that are putting their money towards um, helping illegal illegals. I was going to say immigrant, but they're not immigrants. They're invaders. Um, you know, people are looking, their younger generation is looking at housing right now, and they're saying they can't afford it. Well, I wonder why. When your government is giving people, you know, $10,000 just so that they can get by a month. That's a hundred grand a month. That's what's happening in New York right now. No one's talking about that. No, nor are they talking about, unless you're in the political circles, they're talking about 
what happens in those uber blue blue areas and blue states because of that influx of illegals coming in you know the crime associated with it the strain on every bit and every facet of life and yet this isn't a problem according to our current administration and at the same time they're pushing for that they're pushing to disarm you because they want you to bend the knee you know there's these woke people that have also been in the same circle saying why do you need a gun you know the actor from Cheech and Chong came out and said if you're you're mentally challenged if you have a gun sir I would beg to differ and I would honestly say you're the one that's mentally challenged and maybe you should put the bong down for a while because the reality is um you're more likely to have to defend yourself or you're less likely to have to defend yourself, let's put it that way, if you're capable than if you're not. Because what happens is you project that capability through your actions and through what you do, and you don't even realize it. You know, I don't know how many times just adjusting my posture and getting ready, not even showing, because half the time, and like more than half the people I know who have ever gotten close to me, never realized they carried a gun until they came in really close and and gave me a hug and felt it. So I hide it very well when I conceal carry. But you also see that training come out, where if I see someone do something stupid or do something really fast... Um, you see me adjust my stance, you see me adjust like clearing lanes basically of where I'm, if I'm going to have to fire, what am I going to have to do? Because that's what I think about. And I'm not alone. You know, there are a lot more trained people now and there's a lot of people that don't have training, which scares me more than anything else, that are concealing carrying. And I understand why you would conceal carry. But those lessons you learn change how you walk, change how you, you act, change what you do. And that affects the people around you. Um, you find out, I mean, I've, I don't know how many times this has happened, not because I'm being a jerk, but I've had someone else um, do something stupid. And then someone else that was reacting to that someone else doing something stupid. And then see me move or see me act or see me come in. And they instantly go the other direction and it de-escalates. And, you know, they say, blessed are the peacemakers. That's exactly why I'm, I'm being critical of cops because I want them to be better. They are our last line of, de- well, one of our last lines of defense. You are your own last line, you know. And I, the cops I am around, that I have around me, the majority of them, are very good people. There's just a few bad ones that are out there that are just there trying to uh, milk the system, so to speak, of money until they can find something better. You know, there's a lot of good cops that retired after the COVID crap. And I sit there and I think about all these good cops I've known. You know, I've been blessed to know a lot of good law enforcement agencies. And it sucks to have to call them out. But at the same time, when they're calling these people out, it's time for us to as civilians. You know, what are we doing? Where are we policing the cops? Or how are we policing the cops? Leave a comment. You can email me at atin082 at gmail.com. Like, share, subscribe. Most importantly, be great.